It's that time of the year again, the day we celebrate one of the most amazing numbers there are. Pi, the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter, the first letter of the Greek word for perimeter, and an infinite source of bad math puns. Like how I can't wear this tie anymore because I got pi all over it. I'm Alan Perry, welcome to Scholar Sauce, and happy Pi Day, everyone. The number pi has enamored mathematicians and others alike for generations, and it shows up in a ridiculous amount of real life circumstances. The fact that pi is a constant has been known for thousands of years, and its value is undisputed, even if it's hard to calculate accurately. To 15 digits, it is equal to 3.14159265358979, but we've only known pi this accurately since around the 15th of the 16th century CE. In ancient times, we knew this number considerably less accurately. In fact, accuracy past the first decimal place was unlikely to have happened prior to Archimedes in 250 BCE. Indeed, one place that has been... What are you guys looking at? Anyway, one place that has been commonly criticized for having a terrible estimate of pi is none other than the Bible. You see, long ago in ancient Israel, King Solomon built a temple, and in that temple, he built a molten sea, basically a large circular brass bowl. But when his brass worker, Hiram, builds this molten sea, he makes an apparent error. In 1 Kings 7.23, we read, And he made a molten sea, ten cubits from one brim to the other. It was round all about, and his height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. Did you catch it? The molten sea is apparently a hemisphere with a diameter of 10 cubits, and hence a radius of 5 cubits. In case you were wondering, a cubit is supposed to be the distance from your elbow to the tip of your fingers, a rather non-uniform unit of measurement. Now, if you have a hemisphere of diameter 10 cubits, then the length around the brim should be the circumference of a circle of diameter 10 cubits. As is well known, the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter is the number we're celebrating today, pi. Then the circumference of the circle here, that is the length around the brim, should be 10 pi cubits, which equals about 31.4 cubits and change. But Hiram built his 10 cubit diameter hemisphere with only a 30 cubit circumference around it. This apparently suggests that the Bible is telling us that the value of pi is 3, that is 30 cubits divided by 10 cubits. In fact, this claim has been the target of some Bible critics trying to argue that the entire Bible must be false if it makes such an absurdly incorrect mathematical claim. But did the Bible actually make this claim? Well, this is where it appears that Gematria, maybe some conspiracy theorists, might come in. Get ready for a weird ride. Gematria was a Hebrew linguistic device that assigns values to the characters in each word, and each word is then assigned the value of equal to the sum of its characters. Sometimes, though not always, this linguistic device was used to add additional meaning to a phrase or passage, often as some kind of hidden comparison between two terms or things like that. It's a little like an Easter egg in a movie in the sense that it's hidden and adds something when it's discovered, but when it's actually used in Hebrew, it typically adds more meaning rather than just being a silly reference. In this passage, it appears that something bizarre happens with the gematria of this verse, and it all has to do with the Hebrew word for line. If you look up the word line in Hebrew, we find that the word used is kav, which is written in Hebrew with two characters, a vav and a kof, or kof and a vav since it's read from right to left. In Hebrew gematria, the character kof has a value of 100, while the character vav has a value of 6. Thus, the word for line in Hebrew, kav, has a value of 100 plus 6, which equals 106 in Hebrew gematria. However, this is not how the word line is written in the Hebrew version of this passage. In the Hebrew version of this passage, the word uses an additional character, adding a heh to the word to make the word kave. This changes the gematria of this word, but in a fascinating way. The character he has a value of 5, and so the word kave now has a value of 100 plus 6 plus 5 equals 111. But here's the astounding thing. If we use both of these numbers and divide the value of kave by the value of kav, we get the fraction 111 divided by 106. Multiplying this by the stated value of 30 as the circumference of the circle of the brim of the bowl yields 111 divided by 106 times 30, which equals 31.4151. If this number is the circumference in cubits, then dividing by the diameter yields a value of pi equal to 31.4151 divided by 10, which is equal to 3.14151 which is only off of the actual value of pi by 0 0.00008, or 8 hundred thousandths. That's only 0.002% off. This value is considerably more accurate than any other estimate of pi available at the time. 
And the best estimate at the time was probably the value 22 sevenths that Archimedes later showed was too large. And 22 sevenths is equal to 3.142857, which is 0.04% too high. So not only did the Bible not state that pi equals three, it apparently hid within it an estimate of the value of pi that was actually an improvement on most estimates at the time. Does that strike anyone else as weirdly convenient, a little too accurate, while also incredibly convoluted? But I know that sometimes there is some meaning behind gematria in some passages in Hebrew. So what do I know? Well, I thought we should probably check with an expert. So I reached out to Dr. Dan McClellan, a scholar of the Bible and religion, and who happens to have an amazing YouTube channel called Dan McClellan. There's a link in the description. And if you like an academic approach to Bible and religion, his channel is great. I asked Dan about this, and he told me that this whole gematria argument is entirely coincidental. In fact, he pointed out that the extra character that made the whole gematria thing of this verse work isn't even in the earliest copy of the passage from the Dead Sea Scrolls. He also found it incredibly unlikely that the authors of this passage, who were writing for rhetorical purposes, not scientific ones, would have cared enough about this to incorrectly state the value in the text, but then hide the correct value under layers of gematria and comparison with an alternative spelling of a word. Well, that's disappointing. Indeed, the truth is actually much less exciting. It was apparently pretty common in Babylon for architects to use the value of 3 for pi, even if the architect knew that the value was imprecise. A few tablets from ancient Babylon suggest that their best estimate of for pi was actually 3.125, but using 3 for pi was still consistent with typical practice at the time. So what we can really conclude about this verse says nothing about whether the Bible got it right or wrong. Using pi equals 3 was a typical convention of the region and period of time in which this passage was written, and there's no good reason to expect this passage to have desired any additional accuracy. We can also say that all this gematria stuff, while producing a surprisingly accurate value, is purely coincidental and a bit contrived. One thing that I am curious about, though, is why some Hebrew manuscripts of this passage happen to have that extra character in the word for line, and use kava instead of kav. I expect that this too has a rather mundane explanation, but I'll shout out to Dan McClellan to see what he has to say about this passage, the value of pi, and hopefully an explanation of why this extra letter showed up in some manuscripts, but not others. Well, happy pi day everyone, and thanks for watching Scholar Sauce. Please like this video and subscribe. You can also check out some more of our fun math content, such as this video here that explains how old JRPG world maps weren't spears, or this one about a bunch of math facts that sound fake but are actually true. And also, don't miss our Pi Day video from last year where we learned that you should stop saying that Pi is infinite. We'll see you next time. Whoa, what in the world happened here?